I'm Eples Vox, and welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. In the previous episode, I introduced you to the software and its UI, and explained how this course works. Here's a hint. Check the description for time codes and links to all of the full episodes in this course, as I've probably already answered any questions that you may have in those videos. Go, go, go check them out. In this video, I'll show you how to manage your audio and video devices, audio interfaces, webcams, and capture cards. If you want to download XSplit for yourself and haven't already, consider using my affiliate link. It's in the description below, and it will let them know that I sent you and encourage you, them to you know, continue supporting free tech education, just like this course. Are you ready to take ultimate control over your live stream, but you're not sure how? The Elgato Stream Deck is the key to unlocking your full potential. With your choice of six, 15 or 32 keys, all with customizable screens behind them and unlimited possibilities to nest, make folders and pages to control your live stream with scene switching, muting your microphone, activating your Elgato key lights and setting up multi actions to do everything at once. Start your stream, turn on your lights, tweet your stream. You can do anything. You'd be a fool not to have this in your setup. You don't want to be a fool, do you? Check it out via the link below and tell them the stream professor sent you. First, let's talk about your audio interfaces or mixers. These will be either connected via USB, something like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, Behringer 204HD, or the Go XLR, or connected to your computer's 3.5 millimeter line in jack, as is the case with many analog mixers. Or perhaps you have a gaming headset connected directly to your mic jack on your computer or connected via USB. These will all show up in your Windows sound control panel differently, depending on your device. A USB interface or microphone will show up as something like Go XLR, Chat Mic, or Blue Yeti, etc. A 3.5mm analog device may just show up as something like Realtek Microphone, or even just Microphone. It's important that you check your Windows settings and make sure that you know what devices you are looking for before trying to set it up in XSplit Gamecaster, because if you get there, you're going to be real confused as to why you're not getting any audio if you had the wrong device in mind. Thankfully, webcams and video devices are easier. They're all USB or PCIe, and they show up as the name you'd recognize. Elgato HD60S, Logitech C920, and so on. Let's jump into XSplit Gamecaster now. Click that settings cog in the bottom right hand corner and select the devices section. If your Windows default audio settings are correct, you can just leave this on default speakers and default microphone. But it's generally a good idea to manually specify what should be used. Under System Audio, select your audio output device, your headphones, your speakers, the system audio track on your Go XLR, wherever you will be routing your game sound and other sounds. Playback sample music or game sound and watch the audio meters bounce. That way you make sure you have the right device selected. You want your audio to peak around halfway up the bar to 75% up the bar. Keep in mind this needs to balance with your microphone. You don't want it overpowering your mic, nor clipping by reaching 100% but you also don't want it to be too quiet. Your viewers do want to hear your game. If it's too loud, too high up the bar, use the slider to lower volume levels. That being said, if your game sound or system sound is plenty loud enough in your headphones, but showing up as super quiet and XSplit for some reason, then you can check the box next to System Audio Boost and crank that as high up as 300. Keep in mind, the big important factor in audio balance is to test, test, and test more to make sure you have the right audio levels and don't just wing it and go live before checking. Do some test recordings and make sure it sounds great before starting to broadcast. Next is your microphone. Again, choose your microphone device from the list and try balancing the levels. Again, if you need more volume for the mic, check microphone boost and crank it up to 11. If you have a lot of background noise in your microphone, you can check the remove background noise box. This applies a basic noise removal filter to your microphone. This can be handy if you can't do anything else to reduce noise, but it's worth noting that great microphone sound is 95% about physics and technique of microphone usage, placement of the microphone, speaking level, sound treatment, and control of your environment. I have an entire video diving into the ways that you can improve your audio quality based purely on the physics of how sound works, linked in the video description if you want to learn more. Lastly in this menu is, of course, your webcam. If you're looking to add a capture card, we'll show that later. Time code on screen for that. In the doobly-doo. Select your webcam from the drop-down menu. If you do not see your desired device here, it is possible you're using a capture card or a camera that doesn't register as a webcam or UVC class device in Windows. If that is the case, you'll have to manually manage it as a source in your scene. 
Once selected, if you wish to manually tweak the resolution and color formats of your webcam, you can click the gear icon to do so, if available for your device. But XSplit will do its best to manage these settings automatically for you. As an example of these manual settings, with the Logitech C920 specifically, you can change the output size to 720, or 1280x720 or 1920x1080. Keep in mind the color space slash compression options change based on resolution. So for this webcam, for example, you can use YUY2, an uncompressed, higher quality option, at the default 640x480 at 30 frames per second. But if you change the resolution to 720p or 1080p, you only get 5 frames per second, unless you switch to H.264 compression mode. This is generally fine for most people, but it does require more CPU usage to decode than YUI2 and can be of lower quality technically. There is a trade-off to make with this. Generally speaking, if you only really use your webcam for a small face cam over top of gameplay, I actually recommend leaving it at a lower resolution, that way you can use YUI2. But if you spend a lot of time on stream with your face cam set to full screen, chatting with your viewers on stream, then the higher resolution mode might be a better choice. Just keep in mind that all of the available USB webcams have a smaller sensor than even your smartphone, and their true native resolutions are much lower than you know 1080p or 720p, so bigger numbers doesn't always magically equal better. This is all you need to worry about in this Devices tab of Settings, so once you're happy with your setup, feel free to close this window. There's another section where you can change the device options as well. This is important for those of you adding capture cards for game consoles or dual PC setups too. In the bottom left-hand corner of the main XSplit Gamecaster window are two icons, a camera and that of a laptop. Clicking the laptop icon lets you change the game capture mode of Gamecaster between capturing PC games on the same PC that Gamecaster is running on via software game capture and an external capture card source. You can switch these at basically any time, and this will just swap in place your game capture source, which is pretty cool. By choosing the capture card source, you're able to then select your capture card for use. If you choose the single PC option, you can then choose between display capture for any monitors on your PC, or specifically uh, looking for windows or apps to capture as well. Or you can leave it on any game, which will just wait to detect 3D game hooks when a game is launched. If the Any Game option is not detecting your game, you may need to manually select your game from the list of running apps instead. Clicking the camera icon simply gives you a quick toggle for switching between multiple webcam detected devices. It's handy to have quick access to that here. XSplit makes it easy to manage your camera and webcam sources so they're always assigned to the right devices. If you wish to make a custom scene instead of using one from a theme provided you know, by XSplit with a webcam already added, you can add it there too. Simply click Edit Scene on the preview, then Add Widget, Sources, and Camera Source. If you accidentally delete your gameplay source from your scene, you can add this here as well. This XSplit Masterclass is also brought to you by Owned. Owned has lots of cool graphics. You want your stream to have that, wow, where'd you get that effect? Owned stream designs can do that for you. You got avatars, you got logos, you've got alerts, you've got stinger transitions, you've got layouts, you can preview them in real time. They're really cool and you can fully customize them and they're easy to use. Go to eposfox.gg slash own3d, link in the description, check them out and upgrade your stream today. Microphone and speakers, check. Webcam, check. Capture card or PC game capture, check. With all of this covered, hopefully you, you're now comfortable managing your audio and video devices in XSplit Gamecaster, and you're ready to you know move on to our next video and start tackling streaming and recording settings. Available in that playlist link in the description down below. While you're down there, hit subscribe for more tech education. You know. Click, click, click that subscribe button for more tech education and stream guides. You know what you're doing. Maybe hit the like button as well. Consider sharing this course with a friend. I'm Eposvox, your stream professor, and I'll see you next time.